Hey, it's Mike with Tech PB. And actually, this is going to be my first video um, with the YouTube Partners program, the AdSense. So I'm not sure what exactly that happens. Supposedly, they're supposed to put some ads in the in the videos for people to click on, and after a couple months, they'll cut me a check for like a hundred bucks or something. Anyway, anything that'll help pay for all the paint that I waste on Tech PB, I'm more than welcome it. Okay, today's video we're going to talk about. First shot drop off and what it is and how it affects the gun and what to do to look out for it. And you have to understand, first shot drop off, what exactly it is, it, it's a problem and, 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 and I used to be a, a fluid power engineer, I used to sell hydraulics and air supplies and stuff like that for factories and, and you have to understand that what the actual problem, the real technical fluid power engineer problem, the uh, definition of the word is called stiction. The easiest way to describe what happens with first shot drop off and how the O-rings work is you know that inside of your gun you have O-rings and the O-rings are pressing against the metal. You also know that inside the metal, if you looked at it under a magnifying glass, it's not perfectly smooth like a diamond or anything like that. There's pits and valleys and ruts and grooves in it and stuff like that. And when your gun sits, for days or weeks at a time and, and even inside your solenoid you've got rubber going against metal. What happens is at the microscopic level it's kind of like taking play-doh and putting it on concrete and then picking it up and then looking at it. Okay, It's not a perfectly smooth o-ring pressing against a perfectly smooth metal face. What happens is is the o-rings seep into the cracks and the crevices and the pits that are inside of the metal making it harder for them to break free. So if you can imagine taking a piece of Play-Doh, going outside and putting it on concrete, you would realize that it would be kind of hard to drag that Play-Doh over the top of the concrete because the, the Play-Doh has seeped its way into the metal grooves and the cracks. That's what happens with solenoids and with the internals of the gun. Um, now, most guns that are made today, especially spool valve guns, do a very good job of overcoming first shot drop off by taking the solenoid and giving it like double power, which is what you see the anti-bolt stick setting or first shot drop off protection. We already talked about what dwell is. Dwell is uh, whatever the gun runs at, at let's, say, let's say we're talking about, uh, well we'll just put the shocker in there because that's the gun with the worst first shot drop off and coincidentally the, the stock board doesn't have any protection about it. The dwell runs at 12 on a stock shocker okay and on like a die gun I believe it runs at, at 18. The first shot drop off protection what it does is instead of running it at 12 or 18 it gives it a hit of an extra like 8 to 10 milliseconds of dwell to overcome that stiction to break the solenoid free, to break the bolt free, to slam the bolt forward so hard that it overcomes that stiction inside there, the, the, the bolt stick and the, and the solenoid stick. So by giving it an extra juice of power, it's almost like, almost like a, a, um, um, you know, a, um, giving your car a jump of power. Okay, what it does is it, it takes the stock setting of 12, which is normally what the gun can run at, and then hits it with an extra hit of, of electricity to hold the solenoid open to break the bolt free so that the bolt goes forward. That's what anti-bolt stick does. That's what first shot drop off compensation does. Now, most of the spool valve guns that are out there today have that already built into it. Die's a great example, okay? All of the, 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 um, the you know, especially like the Proto line and the DM8, the first shot, and it's, I believe it's like their timeout is like every time you turn the gun on, if you turn the gun off and then turn it back on, that first shot, it gives it like five to 10 extra milliseconds of dwell. And, um, and that way you overcome that bolt stick. The stock shocker board, which is probably the one that is the most notorious for this, does not have that setting. So what happens when you have a stock shocker board and you've got first shot drop off? Well, here's what happens. Now I use the Lux for example. The ball gets shot, sticks right here in the barrel, the next ball feeds, that one finally breaks free, shoots the second ball into the first ball, they both collide and blow apart of the barrel. Now the Lux has first shot drop off compensation, thank God. Um, but the stock shocker, the nerve board, does not, which is why I love playing against people with stock shocker boards, because usually they take the barrel suck off, the first shot, the gun goes puff, 
Nothing comes out of it. The second shot, it explodes paint all over the floor. Then the gun, the game starts, and they can't hit me five feet in front of them. Um, now, that's why a lot of people also buy the aftermarket boards for the shockers, because the aftermarket boards like Virtue and Tadao and Seventh Element and Tag and every every aftermarket board that goes for the shocker has the anti-bolt stick, has the first shot drop-off compensation to give that gun, that solenoid, that extra hit to break the break it free. But that's what first shot drop-off is. Um, most of the guns that are spool valve guns, those are the ones that you have to worry about first shot drop-off. The only gun that I can seriously think about that, that needs first shot drop-off protection that doesn't have it is the shocker, the stock smart parts shocker. Um, most of the guns nowadays, even the Dangerous Power G3, comes bone stock with anti-bolt stick. All the proto guns come with anti-bolt stick. All the die guns come with anti-bolt stick. Um, most of the spool valve guns that are on the market, even the droid, comes with anti-bolt stick. Now, why do the spool valve guns need anti-bolt stick, but the poppet guns do not? Well, the biggest reason is the spool valve guns use more O-rings. There are more O-rings in contact with the bolt that the, that the, um, that the poppet guns do not. Also, the spool valve guns have more O-ring surface area touching them. Like if you look inside of a die, the O-rings are that big. Well, if you look inside of a, a vise, the O-rings are like the size of a pencil eraser. They're very small. So there's more surface area of O-rings touching metal, which could cause more stiction in a spool valve gun than the poppet valve guns. So that's the reason why most of the poppet valve guns do not need them, like the Oigo, even though they have it, like the Vice, the Protégé, the Alias. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of some of the other guns, you know, any, any just name it, any poppet gun, the E-Tech. Uh, most of those guns, even though they may come with the settings, do not really need it because there's a lot less O-rings in those guns in contact with the air. Like with, a, with an Ego, there's two O-rings. So you've got the one on the front of the rim and the one on the back of the rim, and that's it. You know, in an in in Intimidator, in an Alias, you know, there's an the O-ring on the front, O-ring on the back. The new Protégé and the Vice, O-ring on the front, O-ring on the back. That's it. The bolt O-rings don't have much to do with this because the air is not touching those. So that's what anti-bolt stick is. That's what first shot drop-off is. It's when you take your gun and your first shot, you're going to go, and it barely cycles. And then the second shot, it finally fires. The problem with that is that if that happens, sometimes the bolt cycles just enough to feed the ball into the chamber to get the next ball to feed in there. Then when you do get your true shot, you just blow two balls up into your barrel, and, and, and now your barrel's an absolute mess, and now the game's about to start, and you can't hit anything. So that's one of my biggest problems with the shocker is that the boards that come in them are fucking garbage. I mean, they're just junk. I mean, they're, they're worst boards on the market. The gun needs first shot drop-off. It doesn't have the DM4 has first shot drop off protection in it, has anti-bolt stick in it, and they've been making that gun for four years, and the shocker they've been making it for five or six, and they still haven't put a stock board in it with anti-bolt stick. So what happens when you're at the state, you know, when you're getting ready to start, you take your barrel stock off, your first trigger pull, the gun barely cycles, it puts a ball right here, the next ball drops in, boom, blows the ball out, and now you've got paint all over your barrel. Every shocker owner knows it. Now what they usually do to overcome it, is they unscrew their barrel, shoot it a couple of times, screw their barrel back on. I see, I see shocker owners doing it all the time. So that's what anti-bolt stick is. That's what first shot drop-off is. Another thing, too, is if your gun has anti-bolt stick and it's, a, and it's a poppet gun, one of the best things you can do right away is just change the battery. Just change the battery, um, swap out the battery, see if that doesn't take care of it. If that doesn't take care of it, try upping the dwell one millisecond. If that doesn't take care of it, maybe try relieving your bolt. Um, if that doesn't take care of it, then you may have damage done to your solenoid, and there may be dirt in there preventing your solenoid from shuttling enough to, uh, to blow all the air out of it. So that's what first shot drop-off is. That's how you overcome it. Most of the guns nowadays don't really have it except for the stock shockers. Um, all the other guns that are on the market right now, most of them have first shot drop-off protection or their uh, pocket guns that don't even need it. So hope this helps. First shot drop-off uh, and bolt sticks, so now you know what it is. Thanks for tuning in.